मंत्री इंदिरा गांधी को गोली मार दी अब हर जगह दंगे भड़के अब सिखों के खिलाफ हो गया पूरी दुनिया Surprising to me was when I was even 16, which is in the 10th standard. I didn't even know this happened. I didn't know that 1984 riots existed. Maybe that's my fault for being uninformed. But I also believe why I want more people talking about it. it was quite shocking for me to learn about this. That this happened in the country, and I'm like completely unaware of it. Uh, and it happened because one of our teachers in economics class told us about how she was coming back from a field trip during the riots. and i did the research and i and i but what stayed with me was the fact that uh, this was happening in a field trip this can be me or you it can be anybody uh, the riots did not say oh they're on the field trip the kids there's you know there's kids in there let's stop it for a bit let them go back home and it the it affects the world in a big way and, and you don't have to be seek to really feel for that we could be in that situation you know and uh, i think that's kind of what that's how the story came about when i heard the germ of this idea and i asked her more about it and then i then i researched a lot i asked a lot of people their experiences i read a lot of books and newspaper articles watched a couple of documentaries like to inform myself of exactly what was going on for those four five days and the previous history before that on why it occurred but at the same time it was a bit irrelevant because it doesn't matter you know in the se- in in the larger picture of things it doesn't matter why it happened because i feel that violence is should communal violence especially when you're targeting a group of people uh should never be there should not be a good reason to do that so so i went out to not tell a story about 1984 i, I think what attracted me to the story is that there was such a something that i felt was kind of a very universal idea in a very uh and had a i had an opportunity to tell a story in a very engaging way. so i thought कि मैं नहीं जानती क्यों लेकिन कुछ लोग हमारे कुछ के पीछे पड़े हैं क्या नाम है तेरा सो द कास्टिंग वाज अ लॉट ऑफ अ लॉट ऑफ अमेजिंग एक्सीडेंट्स केम टुगेदर द चिल्ड्रन ऑन द बस अ लॉट ऑफ देम अबाउट 8 आउट ऑफ 13 नो अबाउट 16 देयर इज अबाउट 16 किड्स इन द बस सो सो अबाउट आई वुड से 12 ऑफ दोस किड्स आर नॉन एक्टर्स they have come one of them lives downstairs is one of my neighbors kid one of them uh, 10 of them have come from my mom's sunday school she teaches to underprivileged children to she gives tuitions to them in her church so they came from there uh, never been in front of a camera just excited to be there three four of them first time they've ever acted but they want to be actors and two three of them are professional actors so um, so with this kind of little mix we kind of made the kids co- come together the driver was actually the person who's playing the driver dropped out uh, because of a sickness 4 days before the shoot so i have a mechanic character in the film and uh, that guy he gave such a good audition this uh, uh, anil sharma that uh, i i said okay this guy is perfect i wish you know so i cast him as a driver and he did a wonderful job uh, you know of adapting to that and really i feel he played the part really well the teacher used to go to gym with my dad she was in advertising and my dad suggested she come audition she came audition and she just had a great power with her and the fact that she was a mother really helped because she was firm you know yet kind of caring and uh, that's kind of how we made the movie i will tell you that we had about only 12 people as crew about 12 people which is nothing um our person was the camera assistant was also doing the lighting and was also doing you know props if you were asking him to do props on one day we had an art director who was on a few days we had a art director who had a crew because we had to build one or two things but uh, otherwise we had a very very tiny crew and all my uh, people who helped me assistant director were kids from college who were i think suspended so they came and worked on it for a week uh, and i poached them for that um so yeah we so to shoot there's a sh- there's a shot that is even in the trailer that where the bus is going through a mountain like it's going through a landscape a wide landscape and the name goes so that we shot uh, by four five of us just climbing up a mountain 
literally climbing up a mountain with all the equipment and placing it and just shooting on a random mountain that we saw and we're like okay this is high enough for us to shoot or there's a scene where we're following the bus like on the road so for that what we did was that um, my cinematographer the amazing amazing guy Mike McSweeney he uh, he was lying down on the front of our car my father was driving the car I was sitting next to him with a monitor and we tied him with a rope and we drove behind the car usually you have a, a pretty elaborate truck or you know something to you know take you through the shot but uh, for this we just tied the cinematographer to a car 50 kilometers an hour driving behind the bus for like like 20 10, maybe 10 15 kilometers so that was kind of the spirit we shot the movie in you know if you've ever applied to college you know like you know that it's it's kind of like that i had the same emotion i guess a feeling when i was applying to festival because uh, you kind of have a list you want to hopefully play at um but you can't have a strategy as such because you don't know it's not in your control right so so yeah we had a list but but venice film festival was always at the top of mind to play there because it felt like it was the right platform for it to play and uh, I was very fortunate, I'll say, that it got in selected because, yes, it's a pretty competitive festival to get in. And once that happened, uh, there are two things that happen. One, you get some credibility, and so other people will even look at your movies. Sometimes you don't even have to pay. And a lot of thing, a lot of good thing is that people start to invite you also. So the more exposed your film gets in a way, at a good platform, the more people start to, you know take in the film themselves also so you don't have to always keep sending it which is nice I think. Yeah. filmmaking perspective I mean I've learned a lot along the whole way and uh, I've learned you know that there are people that will watch films abroad if they are you know done with a well, uh, I think I think people do want to see Indian stories. It's not, it's not uh, that. So I think that was a nice learning that I had. That as long as you keep, because people are people exist, you know, and and emotions and situations most more often than not are pretty universal. So I think if if you can connect to people with your own personal story, uh, and India has so many, so many beautiful and amazing stories. Uh, we have such a rich history, culture, all of that. So I think I think we're very fortunate to be here, and that so that's something I learned that you know people do want to see uh, India, and uh, I from I, I learned a lot through about process of making movies. You know, I think I think the biggest thing I can tell anyone, you know, especially if it's a young filmmaker or me five years ago, what I would go tell myself is kind of fall in love with the process of making movies. You know that things take time you know to make something uh, writing happens you know while doing it again and again and making it better um, that that it's not ever instant you know like there is there is there is a process of kind of going th over and over and over things you know and and kind of trying different things and just falling in love with the process rather than rather than the glamour of the final part maybe you know or the finished product I think the finished product should be the the I guess the product of the process you know I think if that because I think there's a lot of at least in me I've tried to I think filmmaking you need a lot of patience and you need uh, to collaborate with other people so I think that is something I've learned you know I think I've worked with really great people such you know young raw people that that I think we've all learned from each other a lot whether I've learned from my cinematographer or editor or my sound designer who did amazing things you know like there's a scene with a man uh, just walking across the road like with a rod you know like in a violent scene and uh, and he had and he was just walking and you see him like kind of trap the ground and he added like a little metal sound there and that little thing like made such an impact to the shot you know and to the story itself because it adds a sense of you know violence and danger that comes so I think it's the little things and the process that really uh, make great movies